Welcome back. For one to end today, we'll be making sulfur chloride. Now, here's my stoichiometry if we want to look at it. So, we're going to add 192 grams of sulfur into a 500 milliliter three neck flask with a gas inlet tube on the side of there. I just used the glass tube going through a thermometer adapter. Now, we're going to crush up 300, 235 grams of TCCA, which represents around one mole. This will generate three moles of chlorine. And I added this into a 500 milliliter flask. Now it'd probably be better to use a one liter one though, because 500 milliliters it tends to foam up in the end. And um, while well, it may not be an issue, it, you really don't want it to happen. So yeah. Now we're gonna wash it down with 100 milliliters of water to form a slurry. And this is because the cyanuric acid formed in a reaction sort of inhibits further chlorine generation, so a tiny bit of water helps a bit. On top of there, I added a greased addition funnel filled with 300 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. Now, my addition funnel is not quite large enough, so I added up saving a tiny bit of hydrochloric acid for later. Now, we're going to set up a drying tube to dry your chloric gas. You could use a sulfuric acid bubbler, but I found it's unnecessary, really. So, simply a cotton plug, some calcium chloride, and another cotton plug on top to seal it off. And I could not find the normal rubber stopper I used for the drying tube, but I did find this rubber hose over 1420 thing fit over, fit very well in the drying tube, so I used that instead. And I hooked up the chlorine generator to the, to the inlet tube for a flask. Now, I would use this short path distillation apparatus because it's very efficient for, to distill sulfur chloride, but I don't want to mess it up in case the sulfur comes over. Foreshadowing. So I set up with a Dimroth instead, and I turned on the uh, heating mantle to melt the sulfur, and after the sulfur was molten, I started up the chlorine generation. And uh, you'll see the mistake I did later. So the sulfur is foaming over. Want to know why? I turned the heating up too much, and the sulfur was near boiling. And because of that, when I introduced the chlorine, it reacts very vigorously, forming the sulfur chloride, which dissolves into the sulfur, and it immediately flash boils out to cause foaming. So yeah, you want the sulfur to be molten, but not too hot. So after an hour later, because I was tired and I didn't want to deal with it, I cleaned it up, heated it enough that the sulfur melts, but not near boiling, and I introduced chlorine, and you can see it was a pretty smooth reaction. Nothing foaming. So yeah, you can see our yellow liquid starting to reflux in the flask, and that is our sulfur monochloride, but we're getting a red distillate, and that's because there's a bit of excess chlorine in the apparatus. So after a little while, I set up the chlorine generation to be a bit slow, but not too fast. And not too slow, because otherwise it would be a waste of time, and we're getting a nice distillation rate of sulfur chloride. So at this point, it's pretty much smooth sailing, nothing to do, otherwise keep an eye on the apparatus to make sure it doesn't foam over. And here you can see what I mean about the um, chlorine flask not being large enough. The TCCA foams up because of cyanuric acid forming. It's not really an issue for me though, because I set up the apparatus in a way that even if it foams, it would never reach our sulfur flask and explode from the uh, violent boiling. So yeah, <laughs> oh well. And uh, after a little while, I did add up the add in the extra hydrochloric acid in, so hooray. But uh, yeah, I do want a larger addition funnel. <laughs> I already have a pretty large one, but I want another one. So yeah, pretty much nothing else. You can see chlorine generators generating very vigorously towards the end because I set it up to do that. And sulfur is boiling, not boiling. Sulfur is reacting pretty well. And eventually, I blew the rubber seal on the um, glass too because uh, rubber yeah rubber d really does not like hot sulfur chloride if you do um, do this reaction please use a uh, proper like uh, use Teflon tape or something <laughs> yeah instead of rubber hosing I mean rubber hosing is the classic way of sealing a thermometer adapter now towards the end here we're left with a lot of sulfur boiling instead because there's not really a fast pace of chlorine generating anymore despite having it in a hot water bath so I removed the heating, and you can see we have a bit of charring left in the flask because my sulfur's not exactly very pure, but it's, eh, I don't really care, it's good enough, I can clean this out later anyways. And, um, yeah, I'm gonna neutralize the chlorine generator now with a little bit of sodium added by sulfite. Do not use sodium hydroxide, don't. Do not put sodium hydroxide to neutralize it, it will form chloramine. 
use sodium metabisulfite, sodium thiosulfate, or some other reducing agent, no sodium hydroxide, no sodium bicarbonate, no sodium carbonate. Do not use a base to neutralize it. Use sodium metabisulfite or some other reducing agent. So yeah, this uh, the th- th- thing it took a lot more than I wanted to. <laughs> uh, I'm stubbing over my words because it's early in the morning. I'm tired, but oh well. So I ended up putting pure sodium metabisulfite powder into the flask instead. And it took quite a lot more to neutralize it because of that slight excess of TCA in there. So, yeah. Uh, not really a pleasant reaction because it makes sulfur dioxide. But anyways, here's our sulfur chloride. Now, I'm going to add a tiny bit of sulfur, well, a couple spatula folds because I want to remove that sulfur dichloride. This didn't really work well, though. I don't know why. Probably not enough sulfur or not enough refluxing. But, uh, yeah, you can see it's still red and the sulfur completely dissolved. Anyways, I set it up for a reflux, uh, reflux for like 15 minutes or so. Didn't really work well though. So, hooray. And I set up for distillation. I set up for fractional distillation, you don't need fractional distillation, normal distillation's enough. I just set up for fractional distillation because I hate myself and I want to clean up more glassware. So, yeah, just a little strange our bottle. And, um, yeah, this was pretty interesting. You have a red liquid boiling with orange foam and yellow liquid and yellow gas fun and you get a red distillate because of course you do <sighs> oh well sulfur dichloride it's a pain to store but i can store it because this bottle's a fancy one with a stopper in it so oh well and i simply distilled it until it started foaming far too much for me to actually uh, distill it any further so here's our final yield. I'm gonna add a spoon of sulfur into it to try and remove any remaining chlorine and destroy any sulfur dichloride, but it doesn't really work well. Put the polyethylene stopper in place and cap it off because I don't really want the stuff leaking everywhere. And I neutralized off the remaining stuff in the flask with some dilute sodium hydroxide. Even when dilute, it reacts quite violently. Not fun. Hey, look at this delicious cheese. Now for the glassware, I simply soaked it in dilute sodium hydroxide with its splash of bleach to remove the sulfur odor. And the sulfur will eventually start coming off of it, and if you put a bit of sand in the flask and shake it with some warm water, it washes all the sulfur out. Let's measure it. And it's well, the next day because it was going pretty late at night. There you go. So, um, this thing smells horrible, and it also builds up pressure. I have no idea why, even by reflux over sulfur, you can see it's still sulfur dichloride, a lot of it is. But, let's measure it. Overload. That's very helpful. Well, we can estimate it's around 150 milliliters, so let me get out my, uh, this thing, where I expect around 239.9 milliliters, so let's round up to 230. We have approx no why we have approximately th- um 62.5% yield which is uh mi- <laughs> not too bad actually I was going to say miserable but no it was actually pretty good for <laughs> how um messed up the setup was especially with that sulfur um molten sulfur <laughs> spillover but yeah this is not too bad but I'm still dis- I'm still annoyed that it's mostly red so because it's sitting overnight, let me just turn on the fume hood so I can vent this. Because I do not want this thing to burst the bottle. So, we can remove that. You can see. Now I'm just going to take this and pry this stopper up. I can smell it already. I want to turn the fan up a bit more. God awful smell. Tom described it really well. It smells like Satan's asshole. So, very carefully. Last time I did this, it sent the stopper flying, so. Hooray, I guess? Okay, not too much pressure this time. Uh, my hand smells bad again. Oh well. So I'll keep this thing at room temperature. Nah, maybe the fridge. Yeah, the fridge, because I don't want this uh, thing being very annoying. I mean, you, it does not really... Okay, never mind. There's a smell escaping here. Okay, so, yeah, I do want to put this in the fridge then. Uh, maybe in a bag with some sodium bicarbonate as well to remove the smell, but... We'll be using this in an upcoming video to make Tom's arch nemesis, because... I mean, it seems like a fun... 
energetic, I guess. Uh, ever since I moved that water pump up there, it's been siphoning everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, we'll be using this fake Tom's Arch Nemesis because um, SN, uh, S4, N4 seems like a pretty interesting thing. So I want to try doing that. And I have DCM now. I bought some, so... Well, the EVA is trying to ban it now, so I'm going to buy a few more gallons. But, uh, yeah. So, I think I'll try doing that. Um, I need to buy some more urea or ammonium sulfate to make ammonia gas with. But that'll be a fun video, so... Look forward to that. Here's this nasty chemical. Really annoying stuff. Fumes in air very angrily. Put in sodium hydroxide and explodes violently with steam. So, um... If you guys enjoyed this video, despite it not being... Sulfur monochloride, it's more dichloride than anything. But, uh, yeah. Old tetrasulfur tetranitride. This guy said it was a great explosive because it was so easy to make. All we need is polyene, sulfur, dry ammonia, dry chlorine. Okay, that sounds pretty easy. Fucking easy as, just the best explosive, no worries. Well, I tried it a few years ago and the fucking synthesis nearly broke me. It's easy and convenient. It actually bloody worked! Eat mega shit dicks.